Hey everyone, welcome to another StuCant Expert Session. My name is Joe Hedrick and today we have Fernando Silva from Wistia and he's going to teach us about how to use different types of video throughout the buyer's journey. Fernando Silva is a Solutions Associate at Wistia responsible for helping companies implement video in their digital marketing strategy more efficiently and creatively. He specializes in helping small and medium-sized companies with video and marketing and sales. We're super excited to hear what he has to say. So without further ado, Fernando, take it away. All right. Hey, everyone. It's Fernando Silva here from Wistia. Um, I'm a solutions associate here. And today I'll be talking to you guys about advancing your buyer's journey through video. So a little bit more about us here at Wistia. Um, we are a video marketing platform software that helps businesses communicate more creatively across all areas of their business. And uh, we're, we're located in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and currently we have around 95 full-time employees. We're a little bit bigger nowadays than when this picture was taken. Um, so to start off, I'm not sure um, how, how familiar everyone is with the buyer's journey stages. So uh, I wanted to insert here and, and highlight that for you guys. Um, this is a, a graph made by HubSpot where it focuses on the awareness stage um, of the buyer consideration stage and also the decision stage. And where I want to come in is I want to um, talk a little bit more about the types of videos and where they would fall in through um, the, the different stages of the buyer's journey. So to start off on the awareness stage, um, we have social video. And on the consideration stage, we have product videos. And decision stage, we have one-to-one -one videos. But there's also uh, promotional videos, um, cultural videos, explainer videos, testimonial videos and onboarding as well. Um, so there's a, a bit for us to cover here and I'm really excited to dive into these types of videos and, and give some live examples as well on how some of our customers are using these videos to see better results um, for their business in general. So quick agenda, I will give some examples, some definitions, talk about how you guys can measure results um, based on these videos and, and actually prove out the ROI and how you guys can start. So let's highlight, let's focus on the awareness stage first. Um, like, as I mentioned, we'll talk about social video, promotional video, and cultural videos as well, more of got geared toward company culture videos. Um, so let's start off with some definitions. Um, what are promotional videos? Promotional videos are like personal video invitations, whether you're inventing, inviting guests to a conference, webinar, or an office open house, promotional videos pitch your events while giving your audience a feel for your brand. This is a great way for you guys to, to showcase who you really are as a company and, and connect with your audience um, on a more personal level and attract the type of people that your culture represents. Um, Let's hop on to social videos. Everyone nowadays uses social media and, and we're actively viewing videos and creating videos, whether if it's on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, um, or even Snapchat nowadays. Even companies use a different combination of a bunch of social medias. And uh, videos there are important because they can help drive traffic to the website um, and also help build brand awareness. Um, and to wrap this up on the awareness stage, let's, let's talk about um, the company culture videos. So these types of videos let customers see who you as a company really are behind the scenes as both individual employees and a collective company. There is no better way to connect with your fans than by giving them the behind the scenes uh, peek into the office day to day. And it's also a really great uh, tool for recruiting the type of talent your company really wants, those type of people that you think could be a great cultural fit um, and will help um, build that great company culture that everyone is working towards. Um, so how do we measure results with through uh, of the awareness stage videos? So number one for me would be social traction. How well are your videos performing out there? Are you getting a lot of views? Are you getting a lot of shares? Um, are people going to your website? Are you helping bring traffic to your site with those calls to actions at the end or throughout of your video as well? And if you're using um, these types of videos with, within your email campaigns as well, are you getting email responses? So there's a lot of great ways for you to measure um, the results in the awareness stage, and these are a few of them. Uh, I can definitely send out and link out some resources at the end of this where you can deep dive into the type of stats that, that would matter here 
for measuring uh, results on the awareness stage. Um, so let's dive into the consideration stage now. This is where I will have a little bit more of customer examples and how they use video and how they measure ROI, um, focusing on the consideration stage of the buyers uh, within the buyer's journey. So here we have product videos, um, explainer videos, and testimonial videos as well. So quick definition here for product videos. Uh, this is pretty self-explanatory, but product videos show your product's features and benefits and often include example of how your product works while engaging your audience. Um, it's particularly beneficial for consumers who are um, in the awareness or consideration stage of the buyer's journey and need a clear um, explanation on what your business has to offer and how you can help them achieve their goal. Um, moving on to the explainer video, um, similar to the product video, but this is more on the educational uh, type of content here where you teach your audience how to solve a specific problem that they might have. The problem could be related to using your product or it can be a more tangential issue, but um, by the end of the video, your audience should be armed with the knowledge to take action and um, the skills to solve that problem after watching your video. And jumping into testimonial videos, why, why should we create testimonial, testimonial videos? These videos can clearly show your leads or, or your contacts or, or your audience in general the positive impact that your product has on real people. Um, they can watch your video and, and relate to that person and see that person solving a, a problem that they have and if they have the same problem, it will help them build trust on your brand and see that you are helping people similar to them. Um, and hearing from customers' voices and seeing a product in action is far more engaging than reading a paragraph which can, which can be crucial when winning new customers. So um, creating videos, something to keep in mind, testimonial videos uh, might be something that's worthwhile instead of writing up a white paper, for example, for your business to explain how they could um, solve certain issues just because it's more engaging and it's more relatable. So let's jump into an example here um, that we have. So Pyramind is um, a company that focuses on creating uh, content based on, on musical courses, for example, courses that range in all types of different music genres. And for this specific event that they're highlighting here, Pyramind worked with um, an EDM producer called Moti who um, worked with several big names such as Tiesto and Martin Garrix and, and the EDM world. And they were, want, they were promoting an event and, and wanted to showcase Moti's skill and they created um, some video content on, on how breaking down how he works and, and what his work ethic is like. Um, so for that, they decided to do two things. Uh, one was a live meetup um, and a live event where they advertised on Reddit, as you can see here, and also on Facebook, uh, which is really big. People would get to meet Moti and, and learn from him in person. But they also had a, a digital uh, side of things where they had a video with Moti broken down into three videos um, where they, the viewer could learn um, how, he, how he worked early in his career, what he did um, to remix, remix one of his biggest songs, and also what his sound design philosophy is like. Um, and as you can see down here, it is mostly um, towards only in video. So this is the, t the type of tool they decided to showcase um, how Moti works. Um, and the difference here is that instead of having a live, live meetup, um, they decided to get people's information and generate leads by gating the video content um, to capture first name, last name, and email so the viewer can continue watching and learn more about Moti and, and learn some techniques from him that way. And the reason why I highlight this is because from the live event, as we know, it, it is expensive to go to live events and um, host and set up shop and, and um, accommodations for staying overnight and whatnot. And they were able to generate 165 leads from that live event. Although it might have been a really awesome experience, they were they came out with 165 leads. Um, and with the video, they were able to generate almost 900 um, new leads, which is five times more than five times more than what they generated with the live event. Um, so the ROI of the video here with 868 leads from that video, um, the cost for that uh, was definitely lower and, and you can see that the ROI here was significantly higher. Um, so it's something to keep in mind 
people are willing to give their information if the video content relates, and it just depends on how we are looking to capture that information. Um, and you can see here they use uh, Wistia's Turnstile tool, which is our email capture form um, to gate that video content. Um, so speaking on uh, generating leads with video, I wanted to give you some, um, some, some more of an understanding of where you could place that tool throughout the video and what, where you would see the highest conversion rates when thinking about this in the future. So as you can see here, a lot of people gate their videos right off the bat, um, and we see that there's a conversion rate of about 17% when the video is gated off the bat. But if you notice here on the 0 to 10 percent and the 10 to 20 percent, um, there is significantly higher conversion rate. Uh, and that is because after giving a sneak peek preview to the viewer, they know if they're interested or not, and they're more willing to give you their personal information to continue watching that content um, that they find valuable. So there's more than twice a twice increase there in conversion rate. As you can see here, 0 to 10 is almost 40%. It hovers around 38% conversion rate. And 10 to 20% is around a 43% conversion rate, which is unheard of uh, when thinking about generating, generating net new leads with video. So it is something to keep in mind um, when uh, thinking of ways to, to get high quality leads or contacts added to your database, more of top of funnel content or middle of funnel content as well. So um, another example, um, sticking away from, from the heavy text like I was in the beginning, I um, wanted to talk a little bit more about Toast, um, who uses uh, Wistia to host their testimonial videos. If, if you guys don't know Toast, they are a software company based um, here in Boston that provides more of a management tool and, and point of sale tool for restaurants um, and that type of business. And, they are, this is a video that highlights Bubs, which is a burger company, um, and Bubs talks about how um, Toast helped them become more efficient and, and generate and, and get more profits with in, covering the inefficiencies um, of, their, of their overall process there. And what's important to me here is what Toast can get out of this video. So let's talk about how they can measure results, and I'll cover a few different ways to measure that. Um, over here on the right, you notice that this is this really big graph here is what we call an engagement graph. Um, and this blue line covers the overall engagement of, of your audience with the video. And there's also the orange line, which covers the number of rewatches re for this specific event. So let's go here to the left side. The overall average engagement of this video is 34%. Definitely something that Toast would want to reconsider. And it's good insight for them when thinking about making other um, testimonial videos. Ideally, we would want to see this engagement over 70%. Over 65% is pretty good as well. Uh, but maybe something to keep in mind is that they created a video that's almost four minutes long. So for these types of videos, um, creating a video that's on the shorter side, maybe one to three minutes, it would be more beneficial on their end. They do seem to have a really big amount of plays here with one point with 1,200 views, which is really good but the play rate is something that is lacking at around 15%, which that means is once the video is loaded on the web page where the video is embedded, um, only about 15% of the times are people clicking play to watch this video. And to solve this issue, maybe um, Toast should think about positioning the, the type of testimonial videos more closer to their home page and easier to find so people can click through and, and watch these types of, uh, types of videos. Or it might be an issue with the thumbnail I'm going back here, it did seem like they have a really good thumbna thumbnail with, with uh, the, the restaurant owner smiling, the, the name of the restaurant in the background. But if they're looking to get more engagement, maybe they can have more of an action shot, maybe someone eating a burger, maybe someone cooking a burger, something along those lines. Um, and it's something that can, they can think about to improve um, these numbers on their end. Um, and what we we'll really love here at Wistia is our individual heat maps. And as you can see down here, uh, there, there are individual heat maps. For me to break this down to you, the white means that that part of the video hasn't been watched or has been skipped. The yellow means it has been watched once. Um, and if there were any darker colors, it would mean that they were rewatched in certain areas, going to orange all the way down to red. Um, and if, it's, if, you can, if you have that person in your database, um, you'd be able to see the person's name email address here, but since we don't, you get to see their location and the type of internet connection um, and time and day that they watch this type of video. 
So just something to keep in mind when um, looking at your stats for your videos and how you can improve and or what you might be doing well. So you can think about that for your future videos um, when, when creating some content that's customer facing like this. All right, so how do we measure results? I know we, we dove in there quite extensively um, on our graphs and our stats, but uh, one, we would want to measure the play rate. Like I said, are, are people clicking the video? Are they, are they incentivized to watch this video? Um, two, what is the engagement? Once they click play, are people sticking around or are they dropping off? Um, three, what is the conversion rate? If you add a call to action, if you add a turnstile, are you converting on those? Are you driving traffic to certain landing pages? Are you getting net new leads from this video content that you're creating? And four, if it is something that you're inserting in email, are you getting email responses? Uh, we do see video with an email being really big nowadays, so it is an easier way to quantify it as well. All right, so let's hop on to the de decision stage with video, and this is one of my favorite parts because I do this on a day-to-day -day basis, um, is using one-to-one -one video to communicate with uh, customers, prospects, or people that are in, on the fence on whether this solution is right for them, um, and onboarding videos as well, more on the customer success, success side of things. Um, once someone comes on board, how can we welcome them? How can we um, make them feel part of the community, and how can we service them better as well? So let's jump into the one-to-one -one video. Um, I've, I've heard this been being called video messages or video voicemails. There's a lot of different things or, or, or personal videos, but I like to say one-to-one -one video because it is a personalized video rather than a one-to-many video here. So this is an example uh, of my colleague Jonah sending a video message or a one-to-one -one video to um, his pro prospect Kathleen. Um, and as you can see here, he just has a simple line of text and a video uh, thumbnail embedded on his website, uh, which is great. And it's just a more personal way for, for people to see who Jonah is and, and what he has to show them um, and to create that personal connection. Um, as you can see here, this is me on the right side with my colleague Katie. Um, and this is us sending a prospect a video after a call I had with them. Um, and I can play you. Uh, an example video, it's, it's quite short, and it's something that you guys can think about doing on your end as well. So let me put, click play here so we can get started. Hey guys, we just wanted to send you this video after our call. I do in fact remember you guys, and I'm happy to have the opportunity to sit in here with Katie and uh, show you guys HubSpot. Yeah, we're excited to have the opportunity to continue the conversation on the Wistia HubSpot integration. Um, let us know when we can reconnect and actually go through the entire thing. Feel free to pick a time at the end of this video that works best, and we're excited to, uh, to chat again. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Bye, guys. So as you can see there, that's a great way for you to show your personality and show how excited you are to continue conversations with someone that you have been in talks with or someone that you're trying to engage in conversation with. I wasn't able to insert this directly into this video since it's in a, a keynote right now, but you're also able to insert calls to actions directly after your video if you want to incentivize someone to schedule a call with you so you can start conversations. It is something to keep in mind, and it is something that we have seen a lot of results with. Um, so hopping on, let's moving on. This is a response that we got from that video. Um, it says, the video follow-up is incredible. It may be a few weeks, but I will say this. You have definitely left a good impact, and once we are ready, I'll be calling you. Ha ha. Thanks. So people are excited to um, receive videos and, and see that you have taken your time to make that extra effort um, and make things more personal. And, and it's something that we love to do here at Wistia. And I know a lot of companies are um, adopting nowadays to stand out from the crowded inboxes. Um, so I wanted to showcase some, something that, some results from a test that we did for outbound prospecting. There, there were 200 leads that we tested, um, and we saw a 12% higher open rate when um, talking about video in your subject line and including a video on the email, the body of the email, we saw a 140% higher click rate um, from that. And, and that obviously that might mean because they're clicking on the video thumbnail, but also maybe they're clicking on our calendar link. Um, this is something to keep in mind because that means the person on the other end is actually engaged and interested to see what you guys have to say. And it gives you more leverage to continue conversation or, or continue your prospecting efforts as well. And, uh, and, it's, and it's also really great to see um, your hard work is paying off in general and it's standing out in comparison to other, other customer facing employees out there. So how do we measure results of this one-to-one -one video outreach? One, 
We want to measure click rate. Um, like I said, with, we've seen um, a 140% higher click rate there just by including a video in the email. Um, response rate, are people responding more? Are people eager to get on calls? Or are they qualifying themselves in or out quicker? So that's something to think about. Um, engagement as well, once they click on that, are, are they responding to you? Or are they watching the video all the way through? Um, and percent one, how are we converting on these deals at the end of the day once we engage in conversation with them? because of a video outreach. So I know I covered a lot of different types of videos here, um, going all the way from top of funnel, moving the, the customer all the way down the buyer's journey. So where do I even start? Someone out there is probably asking. So let's, let, me, let me talk about the elephant in the room here. I know it's intimidating to be in front of a camera at first, um, but to me, the best camera that you have the best camera out there is the camera that you have. I know most of us have phones, most of us have laptops, so why not, why not start there? Wistia has an awesome tool called Soapbox um, where you can create quick and easy high quality professional videos by showcasing yourself on a webcam and also screen sharing it at the same time so you can make a more personal connection and walk through certain things with your customers and, and, and um, send that out via email or embed that at, on a home page if you want, or your website as well. So it, it's a really great place to start. Um, this is what Soapbox looks like, highlighting back to Jonah. Uh, once you in, it's, it, is, it is a Chrome extension um, that you would use. You just click on the Chrome extension. You notice that there will be a, your webcam showing here, and these lines indicate where you will be located within the video once you do the screen share aspect of it. Um, and this is what you can see. This is what the screen share aspect of it looks like. Um, you get to see your face on the left side and also the, the screen share on the right side. And you can even customize the video player, add transitions, trim, add calls to action, and change the thumbnail if you want. So it's a quick and easy way to create that professional looking video without having to invest heavily on, on a lot of gear to start off. And um, again, you can find it at Soapbox here at Wistia. So wistia.com slash soapbox. Um, and one other really great content that, that actually the, the gentleman on the right, Chris Levine, who is our in-house video producer, uh, made for us here is a breakdown of what our professional studio looks like and what um, a DIY lighting setup would look like um, for those that are on a limited budget. So on the left side, this is my colleague Sarah May, um, and this is what the professional studio setup looks like. And on the right side, this is a DIY lighting setup, which is um, not bad. As you can see here, it looks quite good for something that's around $250 in comparison to almost $5,000. Um, and it is a, definitely a great way to get started if you want to shoot uh, quick videos and, and add to your site. Um, it is something to think about here as well. So um, you can find more information at the wistia.com Wistia slash library. There's a bunch of resources for there that are for people that are looking to get started or people that have gotten started and want to learn more about how they can advance their use of video. So um, if you want to chat with me, you can find me on social media. Uh, you can find me at, at, at Silva at fsova310, I forgot to put the 310 in there. Um, but if you have any questions, you can shoot me an email. My email is fsilva at wistia.com. Drop me a line anytime if you have any questions, if you're interested in exploring more about how um, you guys can use video in the future. All right, everyone, hope you enjoyed this webinar, and it was a pleasure speaking with you guys. Bye.